Hi everyone. Um, I am doing something very ill-advised, I think, in this video. But I am I'm a completionist, and I'm returning to something. I made a video, apparently, almost, today is February 20th, 2019, and I made this video February 22nd, 2017, almost to the day two years ago, about prototypes in JavaScript, because I was on this path towards explaining a concept known as inheritance, and also another concept known as polymorphism. Now I do have videos about object-oriented programming, inheritance, and polymorphism in Java with the processing development environment. You could go and watch those. And I also intend that my, what I really should be doing with my time right now is making a video about inheritance with ES6 classes in JavaScript. And that's coming, and that's the video you should go and watch. But I, I just, I can't let this go. And I, at the very end of this video, I said, and then I'll make a follow-up one about inheritance using prototypes in JavaScript, and I never did. And perhaps, perhaps there's a kernel of value here in that ES6 classes uh, is really just what's uh, referred to as like syntactic sugar, and I do have a sweet tooth uh, um, um, over, uh, you know, truly everything. Uh, JavaScript is still a, a, proto, a, a prototype based object uh, language. So understanding how these prototypes work and how this concept of inheritance applies to them is perhaps useful. So if you're still with me, I'm going to try to explore inheritance with prototypes in JavaScript as a follow-up to this video 9.19 from two years ago. So if you watch that, maybe you just, maybe you literally just watched that video and somehow ended up here, which would be kind of amazing. Um, if you did, you might have seen that, that I had this diagram. And the idea of this diagram is I was trying to explain that I want to, I'm programming a particle system and there's going to be particles moving around my canvas. And I have multiple particle objects. Each of those particle objects has its own XY position. P1 has an XY, P2 has an XY, but the functionality is tied to particle.prototype. So I've added a show function that draws the particle as part of the prototype, and there is this idea of a prototype chain, meaning that um, everything descends from object.prototype. So if we call a function or look at a property of an object, we first see if it's that object's own property, or is it somewhere up the prototype chain. So what would it mean now if what I want to do is create a new kind of object? Uh, I think in my nature of code book, I call it confetti, which is kind of like a random weird thing, but I'll just use that for this, because I can't think of anything else right now. Um, if I were to create an object, something called confetti, and a new prototype, a class, again, ES6 class. And the way I do this now is with ES6 classes. I don't do this anymore, but I'm, I'm just exploring it because I, I can't help myself. <laughs> confetti.prototype. What I want is I want confetti.prototype to inherit everything from particle.prototype, but maybe have its own additional function. I don't know, like maybe it has a function called burst. So it gets show, somehow it's gonna get show. I don't have to rewrite the show function. It's a special kind of particle um, that somehow uh, inherits that. So let's, let's see how would we do that. All right, so let's go to the code. The idea here is, okay, I am going to write a new uh, class called confetti, but it's not a class. I'm, this is an old, old way of doing stuff with this idea of a constructor function. Because the idea here is I want to say now uh, I'm going to have, and look, I was even using var. So I'll keep using var because I'm living in the past today. C, and C is a new confetti. I want to be able to say like c.show, for example. I want to be able to call that function. So right now, if I were to run this code, I have this loaded here. c.show is not a function. Okay, so how do I have confetti inherit everything from particle. The first thing that I'm going to do is in the constructor function, I'm going to say particle dot call this. Oh, this is so weird, but what the, oh, I, oh, I don't like this at all. But what this is doing is it's basically saying execute the constructor function of particle. Just do what I do when I am a particle. So let's take a look. Let's not do c.show, but let's console log p and console.log c. So we're going to look at the particle object and the confetti object now. Hit refresh. 
So look at this. Both particle and confetti both have an X and a Y at 99. You can see they have those properties. They both descend from object. And if we go into here, we see that particle has its own show function, and then it gets a whole bunch of other things from object. But confetti, uh, it doesn't have the show function. It just has all the things from object. Okay, so how, 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 how do I link the two? So one way to link the two would be to say, okay, you know what? Confetti dot prototype should be the same as particles prototype. So I want to set the confetti's prototype to particles prototype. Now this is not a good idea, I don't think, but let's just, for the sake of argument, let's put that in our code. And let me, uh, let me refresh this. And I can see, okay. Uh, oh look, the show function showed up there. Fascinating, amazing. Well, maybe we're done. We inherited the show function. While this looks right, I have now have a confetti object that inherits show from particle because I've tied the prototypes together. This is actually a terrible idea. So I'm gonna show you in a minute why this is a terrible idea, but let's leave it this way just for a little bit longer. Why, why am I doing this in the first place? The idea is that, you, like, the idea here is that this particle prototype, this particle object, it's go, might, it, if, you're, if you're looking at some of my other examples, has a lot of stuff to it. Maybe it has this whole like, set of physics algorithms built into it. And I wanna just create a new kind of object that includes all of that physics stuff, but I can just draw it in a different way. So let's just try to like simulate that for a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add now another function to particle called um, update. And what I'm gonna do in that function is I'm gonna say this.x plus equal, and I'm using p5 so I can use random, negative five, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move the x and the y around randomly. So imagine this is like a really elaborate physics simulation that I've worked out for how this particle should move. Really, I'm just moving it randomly. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna now add the draw function. The draw function will loop, and I can say p.update, p.show, c.update, a c.show. And what I'll have now, and I'm gonna say background zero, uh, and I'm gonna just make sure I can really see this by saying stroke 255 and stroke weight eight. So I should see, if I go back to here, two little dots dancing around. One is the particle object, one is the confetti object. The wonderful thing here is my confetti object, which, sorry, I am going to now, which is now C. So I have C, a confetti object. I have P, a particle object. This links to confetti.prototype, but confetti.prototype and particle.prototype right now are equal. They're the same thing. So it's actually as if this is linking directly to particle.prototype. So the show function it's getting is right here, and there's also now an update function. Okay. So my confetti object has both an update and a show function and its own x and y. The particle has its own x and y and an update and a show function. So what I want to do is I want my confetti object to inherit this update function, but I want it to have its own show function. I want it to have its own show function. I want it to draw itself in a different way, maybe as a square or with some color or something like that. So let's go back here, and what I'm gonna do is say like, okay, no problem. What I want to do now is say that confetti uh, dot prototype dot show equals function and I'm gonna just do something totally different. Um, I'm going to uh, give it a, uh, I'm gonna say stroke 255, zero, 255. I'm gonna say uh, fill, no fill. And I'm gonna draw this as a square um, with a side length of 50. And now I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, and ah, what's going on? Why, 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 why isn't the confetti calling its show function? The reason why it's not, well, okay, well, okay, well, maybe I need to do this after, after I do this. 
Confetti.prototype equals particle.prototype? Ah! Wait, now they're both showing like confetti. And they're both, I want them to do the same update function, but I want them to do different show functions. So why is that not working? It's because I can't actually, the way that the prototypical inheritance chain thing works is I can't set confetti prototype equal to this. I've basically overwritten it. So it's as if there, there aren't two separate ones. I want to base this on that, not overwrite it. And the way to do that, it's like kind of ridiculous, and this is why the ES6 classes methodology that you should just turn this video off and go use instead, um, is I have to say um, right here, object dot create particle prototype. It's basically making a new prototype based on the particles prototype, but I can modify it. So once I've done that, and I hit enter, now you can see I have both of them are using the same update function, but one has its own show function. And let me show you, we're gonna see this in the console in a way that hopefully will bring this all together in a way that makes sense. So look at this. They each have their own XY, that's good because that XY property is added in the constructor function, which both the particle constructor function and the confetti constructor function call. The particle object has a show and an update function as part of itself. But look at this. Now the confetti object has its own show function, but, oops, sorry. But its update function is down here because it points to the particle. So this is the chain. Confe particle is kind of has its own show and update. Confetti has an XY, its own show, but it also has a show and update which it copied from particle. Now the reason why it doesn't call this one is it always looks for the first instance of something up that prototype chain. So this is wildly confusing and convoluted. Hopefully this gives you a little background and sense of how this works. Um, there's one other missing piece of this, I believe, which relates to this here. The confetti, uh, the confetti object doesn't actually have its own constructor. Really, it should. So for example, if I wanted to do something, like I'm just gonna add right here, like I wanna do something else, like console log, hello, this is confetti. Like in addition to initializing this object the way a particle does, I wanna do something else. Like actually, maybe what I wanna do is give it a color. This.color equals uh, a new color that is uh, pink. And then actually what I'm doing is I'm calling that under stroke. I'm referencing the confetti has a color, like the, the particle gets an X and a Y, the confetti gets an X and Y and a color. Let's see what happens here. Oh, weird, weirdly that worked. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this worked anyway. I thought I needed this other step in order for it to call the confetti constructor properly. Uh, here, if I'm saying um, new particle versus new confetti, it looks like it works anyway, but I'm gonna show you what this step is. Really, one thing, one thing that's kind of missing here is that in, if I look in the prototype here, the uh, particles constructor is pointed to this particle function. And if I go here into the confetti, you can see like, oh, there is no constructor. It's getting it from the prototype chain, which is incorrect. The confetti object should have its own constructor. And so a way to do that is to say, um, I think it's to say, uh, actually I have this line of code here in my, from my example. I'm just gonna copy it in. That's what, it is. Uh, is to say this. Confetti.prototype constructor equals the confetti function. Right? I want to like specifically assign it that. And it seems to me that this is just a convention to kind of clean things up. I can't actually find a place where I need that in order for my code to run correctly, but I'm gonna leave it in there. And so now I'm gonna hit refresh, and we can see here that a confetti object inherits everything from particle, including it gets its own X and Y, and it gets a show function. Sorry, sorry, and it gets a show and an update function. It has its own constructor and its own show function because I wanted to modify the confetti show function from the particle show function.
question. Oh, don't worry. If none of this made any sense to you, um, that's okay. Um, this is confusing and weird, but this is underneath the hood how all of this stuff is linked together in the implementation of the JavaScript programming language itself. This is the prototype inheritance chain. I can basically create a new object with its own function calling the other object's constructor function and then attaching its prototype to a new object based on another object's prototype. It's really weird and kind of awful, um, but this is how I used to make my examples, but don't worry. Oh, there's a new way I make these examples. Oh, you don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, you can skip to, I haven't made it yet, but soon enough, within the next week or two, I will be uploading and publishing a video all about inheritance in JavaScript using ES6 classes. And in those videos, I really talk about the theory behind inheritance, why it's useful, and how to put it into practice in JavaScript. So if you actually made it through watching this video, thank you. Um, hopefully this uh, helped add a little something to your day. And I'll see you maybe in those ES6 classes videos. Thanks, goodbye.